Hi, this is Josh Silverauer from Gru and Bleen, and today I want to tell you about an awesome new Chrome extension called GTM Data Layer Sifter. We just launched this extension uh, to help analysts find different variables on a page and different elements on a page in relationship to certain events. What this means is finding form field uh, values, dynamic values when people submit a form or a drop down when people click an additional or a different button, finding the data that a user selects or inputs in relationship to those events. And we wanna show you how it works. So head on over to GTM Data Layer Sifter in the Chrome store um, if you wanna follow along, or you can just click this link right here and download it and follow along with us. So to show you how this works, I wanna uh, bring you to the Groombleen website. So head on over to www.groombleen.com and click on the contact button. And we're gonna be using this page to show an example of how to track something with GTM data layer sifter. So for this tutorial, we are going to be trying to track this message box. And just a reminder as we're doing this that Google Analytics has a PII policy. So you're not allowed to send into Google Analytics any personal identifying information. So no email addresses, no phone numbers, uh, no names. If you wanna see a full policy of the things you're not allowed to track, uh, you can click here. But for this tutorial, we are not gonna be sending any of that information in, so it's totally fine. And the amount of stuff that you can track in Google Analytics, this opens up a, a completely new world. Um, so we are going to be using this message box and we're gonna track the dynamic data in uh, Google Tag Manager and send that information into Google Analytics and we're gonna use the GTM data layer sifter. We're just gonna type in anything here. Wow, look at this data we got here. Don't worry about grammar, that's not what this is about. So we wanna track this data inside this message box, this field, in relationship to when people click this let's do this because that's basically you know an indication that people are filling out this form. And you can do this on a, uh, on a successful form submit, or you can do this on the click. And for this one, we are just gonna do this on the click, okay? And uh, before we even get started with the data layer sifter, we wanna head into Google Tag Manager and make sure that we have an all click trigger, just so that we have this data available to us in the data layer. So we're gonna create a basic click trigger and you do that by picking a trigger, a click element, and you wanna make it all elements and, and you wanna fire it on all clicks. And this will allow, every time you click on a website, it'll send an event to Google Tag Manager that there has been a click. And then you can look within that element, that click element, that event, and see all of the different variables within the data layer of that specific event. Um, this is how we're going to basically be finding this information. So inside the website, we are going to click the button and we're going to look for this data. Okay, so we have this click and we're gonna look inside this console. So we're gonna pull up either the dev tools or you can just click this inspect and it'll pull up your console. And we are going to type into the Google Dev Console. We are gonna type in data layer. Okay, we have all these objects because I've been clicking all over the page, but the one we are the most concerned about is this object, okay? And this is how we used to have to do it. We had to go into this element and we would have to go through this entire list and find exactly where this stuff was and it was all crazy and you would find this path and you'd figure out, oh, where is the data that I need? Because I know it's in here somewhere, but to find it is a waste of time and energy and it's a pain. So what we're gonna show you is how to use GTM data layer sifter to find this information extremely easily and how to use it in Google Tag Manager. Fundamentally, once you were to find this information within the click or in the object itself, 
you would need to then memorize the path, okay? Or write down the path to where this information existed. If we were doing it the old fashioned way, we would have to go into the element. So it'd be like gtm dot element and we would have to use dot notation to then go and find this. So we would go gtm dot element dot form and then within form, we would have to go down to it here. It looks like the text message dot 10. Uh, and then within there, we would need to find the value or the selected or whatever. Yep, there it is, dot value. And we would have to then take that down and put that into Google Tag Manager, that path, and it would then be able to find that data that's time consuming. You have to, you know, find the path and uh, waste time by trying to find it. So we developed this tool, GTM data layer sifter, where you can super easily find it. So what we're going to do is we're going to go into the elements tab and this is going to, we're going to go into this GTM data layer sifter tab and it's going to look a little similar to how GTM is set up. Um, if you are used to the preview and debug mode, it's kind of combining what you, what you see in the console with what you see in the GTM interface. So we're gonna do this again. We're gonna click this button just so that we have it as the last event that we did. And we're gonna find it in here. And there it is, okay? The context submit, the click is the context submit here or call to action button. And we want to find what's in this box and the path to it. So we're just gonna use our select element that you would use normally if you're inspecting an element. And we're just gonna highlight the box. And there's the entire path to the value in dot notation right there for you. You can verify that it's correct by seeing this matches what we inputted. So we are going to copy this path. Now, the reason we have a path to the value and a path to the text is the path to the value, even though it should a lot of times be the text, oftentimes if the developer set up the website with like a database, it might be inputting uh, numbers that represent text instead of actual text. So this is just to help an analyst find both of those paths uh, so that they don't have to create a lookup table later uh, when they can't find it. Okay, so we're gonna take the path to the value and we're gonna head on over to Google Tag Manager and we are going to create a user-defined data layer variable. So we're gonna call this so that it doesn't get confused with the other ones that we created. We're gonna call this tutorial data layer variable GTM sifter. We are just going to literally copy and paste what we just found from GTM data layer sifter into here. Okay, now we have saved that. Okay, so now we have the tutorial data layer variable and we are going to refresh and we're going to reload the page. And we're gonna show you now where to look to make sure that this is working in Google Tag Manager. So we don't really need the console anymore because we've already found where the path is. So we're reloading the page and we are going to input a different text just so that you can you know, see that this is working correctly. So we're gonna put in, what's the text look like now? We're gonna click this button again and we have a new click event. And we're gonna look at our variables and we're gonna go down to tutorial and we have exactly what we typed in, which is what's the text look like now? And that text is in Google Tag Manager now as a variable and now we can use that to send it to Google Analytics. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna go back to Google Tag Manager and we're gonna create a tag. And that tag is going to be called, we're gonna call this tutorial tag. And uh, we're gonna put in our tracking ID, um, which 
you know, you can put in whatever your tracking ID is, is the universal analytics tracking ID. And we want to create an event with this, okay? So this is gonna be, let's do this click. This is gonna be message box. And the label is going to be the variable that we just created. So we're gonna pull in this tutorial data layer variable and that'll be the label. Um, and you can really use this however you want. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna use that button click as a trigger. So we do know in here uh, that we did click and we if you don't know how to use, uh, make triggers yet, that's totally cool. We will provide a couple of documentations on our blog on how to create triggers. You know, you can click right here to see, but we will be using for now um, this click class as a trigger. So we're just going to create a new trigger. And if you already are genius at creating triggers, uh, that's awesome. So good for you. But for the sake of teaching, we're just gonna go through it. So we're gonna call this, let's do this, click. And I'm going really fast, so I apologize if they're, you're like watching this and you're like, hey, you didn't do something right. Just let me know in the comment section. And tear me apart. All right, so we are putting the click classes contains this, and we're gonna save it. We are going to save this tag, and now, now, now that we have this new tag, we're gonna refresh and uh, we're gonna refresh the page again. And we're just gonna verify that this is actually working correctly and that that information is going into Google Analytics. Okay, so now we reloaded the page and we're gonna type in one more set of dynamic data. So let's just call it dynamic data rocks. Woohoo! All right, and we're gonna do this click. We're gonna do the click and the tutorial tag fired. And we just wanna go in here and verify that it's sending the right information. So it is, look, our uh, event category is let's do this form click. Um, we have the message box and the dynamic data rocks, woohoo. And we're just gonna head over to analytics and make sure that this information actually did send so we're gonna go into our dev analytics. And we are going to go into our real time events just to make sure that everything is firing. And we do see it in our real time events. We see the let's do this form click, the message box and the dynamic data rocks, woohoo. All right, so that is basically how to use GTM uh, data layer sifter to find a field value. Uh, you can also do this with uh, drop downs super easily. Uh, this actually even works with checkboxes and radio buttons. There's a little bit of a trick to use it with that, but we will explain that in our next video. Uh, so for now, you can go over to GTM Data Layer Sifter, search it on Google or on the Chrome store or click this link below. And also for additional information, you can click on the other link that we provided below, which is our blog, which basically is this video, except uh, all written out step-by-step step so that you can follow along if you didn't get everything on this tutorial. And that is pretty much it. And I hope you have a lot of fun tracking all the data in the world on your website. All right, great. Thanks for joining. Again, this is Josh Silverbauer from Gru and Bleem.